G'day folks and welcome to another Check on Chain update for the 21st of June. Now, this is one of those things where we see a lot of narrative floating around on Twitter. Uh, lots of people are wondering how the Bitcoin price continues to chop around this range. Uh, we've gone through a process where people are looking at all the short sellers and more than likely a decent chunk of that's going to be cash and carry trades. And now the latest narrative I've seen is that the Bitcoin miners are the ones suppressing the prices. And to be fair, this is actually not you know, this is actually something that happens quite often, particularly following halvings. Miners build up treasuries of BTC and following halvings, I mean, they, they need a treasury of Bitcoin to get them through the bad times. They acquire the coins in the good times and they use it to actually survive during these fairly tumultuous periods, such as when their block subsidy gets cut in half. So today I want to ex actually explore the minor capitulation that is currently underway, size it up, get a bit of a gauge on how big it is and really assess are the miners really suppressing the price or is this another narrative that we can essentially put on the side? So the months following a Bitcoin halving very often are a point of stress. And we have a series of tools available for miners so we can actually assess when they're in periods of stress. Um, so you may have seen the, the hash ribbons, which you can see on the right hand side here. And there's a few other tools that we can look at. So what we're going to look at is minor revenues in a pre and post halving world and just really assessing the magnitude of this thing. We're going to have a look at the hash ribbon inversion signal. So this is all going to be part of the part one of this video where we go over the magnitude, the scope, the scale of what's actually going on with miners. Now, if you head over to our Substack, this is where you'll be able to access the full report, both a written version and part two, where we're actually going to go into the full deep dive and understand are miners actually suppressing the price? And I want to explore this from a few different angles. We're going to look at the actual balance held by certain miners. And in particular, there's another group of miners who are actually not active anymore. They fall into the bucket called other. These are miners who used to mine, and most of these used to mine back when Bitcoin was much, much cheaper. So you can kind of think about these guys as ancient whales. They've been around for a long time. And strangely enough, they actually sell quite a bit of coin when the market enters a bull market phase. And we saw this in 2021, and we have seen this again into the ETF. So we're going to explore that particular cohort and really make a pretty decent assessment of whether the miners right now, the sell side coming from them is a reason why the market is struggling. And further to that, are we expecting it to continue? Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do give us a thumbs up, a like, a share, and a subscribe. It really does help this channel get to more people. Um, let me know if you enjoy this content. I mean, we get a lot of these types of narratives and questions. In fact, if you do have questions about the market, make sure you let me know because I find this kind of stuff fascinating. It gives me something, something to really explore and deep dive into. But uh, today, let's have a look at the miners and let's see whether they are indeed suppressing the Bitcoin price. Righto. So first things first, let's size up the problem. Now, here we're looking at minor revenue. We've got three different traces here. Let me just get rid of the percent of uh, revenue by fees for now. This is in BTC denomination. So obviously miners, the whole process of Bitcoin mining, it is a cutthroat and ruthless industry. The difficulty adjustment means that every two weeks, the protocol gets, you know, generally speaking, it trades higher. So it means it gets harder and harder and harder to find the next block. But it's also a self-correcting mechanism. So we saw here where we had the minor capitulation back here in 2021. This is when China actually banned all of their miners. We saw 52% of all of the supply of the, uh, the mining hash rate come offline almost overnight. Now, this is a fantastic case study because mining is a cutthroat industry. But there is always a fixed amount of Bitcoin depending on what halving epoch we're in. So back here, we're talking about 900 Bitcoin in orange. There's the layer of fees on top, which comes and goes with bull markets. You can see it. Bear markets, not so much. We've been in a period where there's been more bursts of uh, upticks in fees, but there has been higher fees. So more kind of moderate bull market type fees, not dissimilar to 2019, actually. But the nature of mining is that everyone is competing over a fixed number of Bitcoins. So let's just say for argument's sake, right now we have about 450 Bitcoin per block in subsidy, 50 Bitcoin in terms of fees, so roughly around 500 BTC. So all of the miners are fighting over that one fixed 500 Bitcoin per day, plus or minus. Now, if fewer miners, like what we saw here, 50% of the hash rate goes offline almost overnight, there is still, well, back here it was 900 coins, but there is still 900 coins available to be mined. So if all of your competition is offline, the difficulty will adjust down and you will actually be substantially more profitable. 
Now, the reason this is important is understanding the mining cycle. Why do miners, when we see a halving event and their subsidy gets cut in half, why does this actually create a capitulation event? And more importantly, when we see that capitulation event, why does that actually, when it inverts back the other direction, the hash ribbons go the other way, why is that usually a sign of strength and market recovery? We'll keep exploring this as we step through. So this is the same chart, except we're looking at things in a USD basis. So to bring this kind of full circle, here we're looking at about 70 million in terms of fees and block subsidy, something around 70 million per day. Now, generally speaking, when I'm running my analysis, I will look at mining and uh, generally speaking, I'll just say all of that is sell side. And that is historically true. There are periods of time when miners actually bank more and they put more into their treasury but as a general rule of thumb, you can probably assume that almost every coin is mined because it may not be coming out of a mine. They may be putting into a treasury, but someone else is selling out of their treasury. So over the long-term average, this is roughly the true sell-side pressure. Now that has obviously reduced with the halving because the block subsidy in green has declined literally by 50%. Price is more or less at the same level it was when the halving took place. So we haven't really moved anywhere on that front. And where we stand at the moment, with fees and some of those that shift around, we're about 55%. So we've seen a reduction of about 54%, 55% of the pre-halving uh, minor revenue. So in other words, they're earning about 32 million. They were earning about 70 million. That is you know, um, a direct amount of sell side, right? $38 million has come out of the market in overall sell side pressure. Now, another very healthy trend is actually looking at the percent of their revenue coming out of fees. So that's what this red line here is looking at. And notice this is in log scale. Here's our 10%, here's 1%. During bear markets, like we saw in 2022, one, two, 3% of minor revenue comes from fees, right? This is a more challenging environment because obviously prices are declining, the block reward is getting lower, and there's not as much fee pressure. Where we are at the moment, we've actually got this fairly long term now, almost going on a multi-year, right? One and a half years or so since the FTX bottom, really, we have seen an uptick in overall fee revenue coming or, or revenue coming from fees. Right now, we're up about 10%. So we're up quite substantially, right? That's about 5x from the lows. If we look at this, about 2%, substantially higher and well within, let's call it bull market-esque territory. So Miners really are earning a lot more from fees. This is overall a very, very healthy trend, um, and it is very positive to see. Now, just before we move on, I want to just describe some minor mechanics here. Why, when we see there, let, you know, we've seen the revenue drop, when this actually creates mining stress, what is happening? Miners, they've got this treasury, they've built up their treasury over time, and they need that, they acquire it in the good times, and they sell it during the bad times. They use that treasury to get through those rougher patches. When do we see those? Bear market floors, right? When they've been, you know, markets been trading down for 12, 18 months, fairly depressed prices, fees are low. This is the kind of time when miners have to dip into their treasury. So in many ways, miners actually tend to be pro-cyclical. What does that mean? It means that at the bottom, at the absolute worst phase of the bear, that's usually when miners are actually exerting additional sell side pressure. They lean on the market when it least needs it. Now, halving events, they're generally the other side of the equation. We're usually in some kind of a recovery or an uptrend, right? 2020, it was right before a bull market. Here we are in April, we're you know, a stone's throw from setting the new all-time high. So seeing a halving event occur here may not be such a problem, but you have to remember hash rate and the competition to mine those blocks is constantly climbing. And we'll come and look at hash rate in just a second. So you've got to factor in as a miner, not only what is the aggregate revenue available, but how many people are fighting over it. And that's what makes mining such a cutthroat industry. Now, the pure multiple is a crowd favorite, one of the oldest on-chain metrics. Um, and it's actually a very, very simple construction. It's essentially looking at, in the numerator, it's a ratio. In the numerator, we have the minor revenue. So actually that USD chart that we saw in the previous. And then in the denominator, we've got the one year moving average of that revenue. So why do we do this? And actually you'll see we use this concept of a multiple, right? Some, some indicator divided by its one year average, something on that ballpark. We actually use that quite a bit in the world of Bitcoin analysis because it's actually a very interesting and useful heuristic. What we're doing is comparing minor revenue to itself. 
but we're comparing it to its longer term baseline. And this is really powerful because miners are longer term thinking. So imagine yourself in your job, your business, whatever it is, right now we're at 0.75 post halving. What that actually means is take an average of your salary or your business's income for the last 12 months. Take just take what the average over those last 12 months is, you are currently earning 75% of it. That's what a pure multiple of 0.75 means. If it's up here at 2.4, that means you're earning 2.4 times your yearly average, right? That's pretty good. So when we think about what the pure multiple is describing, periods of extreme stress are indicated by very low values. Miners are earning 40%, 50%, 60%, 70% of their yearly income. That's pretty brutal. Most of us would really struggle if we saw our income sliced down by that. Right, you're getting a 30% pay cut almost overnight. Um, and the reason it's 30% obviously is because it's a one year average, right? So they're kind of planning and preparing for the halving, but you can plan and prepare all you want. Getting a, you know, fees at 10%, getting 50% slashed off 90% of your income. It's pretty brutal stuff. But conversely, we can spot periods of euphoria when they're just earning money hand over fist. So think about why the pure multiple is useful. Both extremes to the upside and extremes to the downside indicate when miners are likely to sell. They sell on the downside because they're stressed. They have to turn off rigs. They're still coming under pressure. They've got shareholder pressure, all of these components. Market's down. No one knows when the bear market's going to end. They have to sell the coins they acquired in the good time to survive the bad time. In the other uh, converse, when we're in a bull market, they have to sell because they're mining right here we are on a pure multiple of 6.6, .6. they're earning 6.6 .6 times their yearly revenue. In terms of a shareholder, they're going to want to sell. They're selling into the rally. And this is really important because when we get to the ancient miners, they are specialists at selling through this orange zone. That's what makes this so intriguing. So the pure multiple, right now it's telling us that they may not be at an extreme level of stress, but they're not having an overly great time either. Right? So if the market were to sell off from here, they would probably enter an even deeper uh, uh, capitulation style. Right now, we could argue they're probably just teetering on the edge, and we'll, we'll assess this in more detail. So this is probably a metric that most people are familiar with or have seen before. It's called the hash ribbons. This is a tool to really understand when miners are under that level of stress. So coming back to mining fundamentals, why does hash rate, now what we're looking at here is a moving average of the hash rate. It's a 30-day diving below the 60-day and the 90-day. That's what we call a hash rate inversion. Why do we get this inversion where the faster 30-day dives below the 60 and the 90-day? Why does this happen? Well, if we go back to this mining ban, suddenly all of these machines got switched off overnight. In this case, because China actually kicked them out and, and banned these miners. So you've got a large drop in hash rate. The faster moving average declines first. So remember, as that declines... It's usually indicating stress. Here we've got it in a bear market. Here we've got it in a post-halving environment. Here, actually, in 2020, we had the double halving. We had a halving of price. We recovered, and then we had a halving halving, right? So the miners got slapped twice in a row. Uh, pretty brutal stuff. The weaker miners, those that have a weaker balance sheet, they have to turn off their miners. Now, remember, they've invested CapEx, they're essentially in the business of buying Bitcoin with CapEx, OpEx, power, salaries, rather than just buying it off the open market. They are bidding for Bitcoin issued by the protocol with power, CapEx, OpEx. Since a miner has already spent the money to buy the machines, they've already invested the capital, they will continue to run them until they are no longer profitable on an OpEx basis, right? The power and the salaries and the maintenance, when that is too expensive and they're not making that money, they'll switch them off. So when we get these hash rate inversions, it's actually saying that the weaker miners in the situation are having to turn off a portion of their rigs because they're no longer profitable even just to run the power through them, let alone their interest payments and all that stuff on the machines themselves, right? That's a whole nother pain that they've got sitting in the background. Now, even with that said, remember the pure multiple? I said, you know, we're not really in capitulation territory. It's not great, but it's not capitulation territory. Well, the all-time high on a 30-day basis all-time high is 625 exahash per second. Right now, we're about 600. So that's something on the order of about a 4% decline. 4% isn't that 
meaningful in the grand scheme of things. That's not the biggest decline that we've seen, right? 25 AXA has just come out of the market, but we've seen much worse events in previous um, previous cycles. So yes, we've got a hash ribbon inversion, but 4% decline isn't enormous. You kind of think about that 4% of the hash rate is under stress, but we're starting to flatten out and we're looking to see if this recovers. Now, what happens is the weaker miners have to turn off, but remember what I was talking about with the China ban. If your competition switches off their rigs, but you're able to keep plugging away, you're going to start earning more of that fixed 450 plus 50 Bitcoin, that fixed reward, you are going to continue to earn more of that because your hash rate is still online. And this is what actually creates this initial treasury sell pressure. Once it stops, we generally get an uplift because the miners relieve their sell pressure overall, which gives the market a little bit of relief. Now, there's another tool which is a little bit more funky to explore this concept of, uh, of you know, minor stress or minor capitulation, and it's called the Mining Pulse. And this was actually invented by my good friend Permeable Nino uh, many years ago. What I've overlaid here in the red is the hash ribbon inversion. So every time that the hash ribbons are inverted, that will show up here as these red lines. And it's really just to show you the confluence. It's describing the same thing. So the Mining Pulse, which is this orange line here, let me turn off the core Mining Pulse. On a 30-day moving average, what we're looking at is the deviation of block time, right? Are blocks coming in faster, positive numbers, or slower, negative numbers, than the 600-second average, 10 minutes? So right now, you can see that we're in a period of hash ribbon inversion, and blocks are coming in about 14 seconds slower than they should do. That's telling you that there's less hash rate online, blocks are being found slightly slower, and as a result, this is about 2.5% slower, so if we think about the scale of this minor capitulation, 4% to 2.5%, so let's just be really generous and say about 5% of the mining hash rate is struggling at the moment. 5% isn't enormous. So if we, if we just only to look at these assessments, my read would be that, okay, miners are likely to be distributing some of their treasury, but it may not be a complete and total fire sale meaning miners are probably treading water up here. They may not be really like full-scale bear market level capitulating, but they're probably not building their treasuries. They might be just treading water, right? They mine 10 Bitcoin, they sell 10 Bitcoin. They mine 10, they sell 10. They're probably just treading water. You know, some of them might be selling their treasury here and there, but this doesn't feel necessarily like a real painful bear market level capitulation event. So that's where we're going to leave part one. If you're interested in seeing part two, we actually explore all of the actual individual miners and which ones are actually selling, what we're going to look at in terms of the ancient miners. Stick around, jump over to our Substack, and we'll jump into part two. So thanks, folks, for tuning in for part one of our weekly analysis. If you enjoyed the video and you want access to the full video and the rest of our analysis, do head over to our Substack and hit subscribe. As a paying member, you'll actually get access to a second piece of analysis each week, as well as the comment section where you can ask me questions and we'll answer them in a Q&A on a regular basis. So thank you so much for all of your support. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.